Good afternoon, everyone. Benjamin Lindsay here, managing editor at Backstage. I uh, hope you've enjoyed your time these last couple weeks. I've been on vacation myself, so it's good to be back hosting these interviews for you guys. You're, of course, tuning in for the latest installment of Backstage Live. Today, we are speaking with actor Peyton Meyer. He's best known for his days on the Disney Channel starring in Girl Meets World and on ABC's American Housewife. Next up, later this month, he's seen co-starring in Netflix's He's All That. Uh, it's just the latest gender-swapped reboot that this young actor has starred in. Um, I've seen it myself. It's so much fun, uh, and he's, he's a heck of a talent. So I'm excited to pick his brain a little bit, how he got started in Disney, and now navigating into these more adult roles. Um, so uh, without further ado, let me see if he's in our audience, and I can bring Peyton on to join us. Hey, What's up? hey Ann, how's it going? Good, how are you? Good, good. Uh, my name's Ben. It's, it's, a, it's a pleasure to meet you, at, at least in this remote, on-camera way. Yes, um, exactly. Yeah, Great where, to meet where, you. Where, where are you calling in from? I'm actually in L.A. for uh, the premiere, so I'm, I drove cross-country to get here, but uh, I'm in L.A. Oh, very nice. Okay, how's the drive? It was great. We stopped in, uh, you know, a couple little places. We stopped in Sedona and Albuquerque and Texas just to hang out a little bit. But it's kind of cool seeing the country like that. I've I've never driven across country, so it was pretty sweet. Yeah, yeah. I've never had the chance to do that myself, but it's definitely on the bucket list. Um, and exciting that you're uh, there to celebrate the premiere of He's All That. Um, before we get to that, I'd love to hear just a bit more about your roots in the performing arts, how you got your start. Um, the backstage readership really is kind of the working actors of the world. So uh, t take us to the beginning. Just the, what role did the performing arts play in your life growing up? And when did you get hooked? Yeah, so basically, I mean, I was, you know, a regular kid. I was sports kid, basketball, football, baseball. Um, and then I did this one play when I was in third grade, I think it was. Um, and that's basically when the seed was planted. Uh, and from then on, I basically just watched TV and was always so addicted to how it all worked. I just really wanted to know how these people got on TV, how they're doing what they're doing. Um, and then I basically just kind of started out from there. And in Vegas, I was born and raised in Vegas. So in Vegas, I did this little, uh, you know, kind of tryout, I guess, and ended up finding an, an agent. And she took me to L.A. She was like, you need to move to L.A. And we drove back and forth from L.A. to Vegas and just started out just started yeah yeah out i mean that, that's, the, that's the way to do it and it, i'm sure it helps it sounds like you had a support system your parents were into it and uh, down to do the drive from vegas to los angeles and make the whole thing work um do, do you remember the performances growing up that really inspired you like what what excited you uh about the medium and about the craft in the first place yeah so basically i mean i was like 10 when I started so mm. bear with me but I mean it yeah, was like sure. it was like George Lopez and friends mm -hmm. um just it just fascinated me I mean just the comedy of it and like it seemed like it was so much fun and you know I ended up asking my mom I was like how, how does this work and they're like they literally sit on set and I ended up looking up online like how it all works and I saw some backstage stuff and I was just so enthralled by the entire process of how how crazy it looked yeah, yeah. And then obviously, here you are a handful of years later, and you have credits like Girl Meets World, American Housewife, and now uh, He's All That under your belt. Um, t tell us about how you first kind of got your foot in the door at Disney. I mean, Girl Meets World, I remember when that show first came out, so many people were talking about it. I was a fan of the original myself. Um, so how is it that, uh, yeah, that you, you kind of got your foot in the door there? Well, you know, I mean, uh, it took me 10 years to build that list. Mm -hmm. um, that I now have. And it, it takes a lot of time, you know, coming into it. I was a kid, but I still understood that, you know, this is the entertainment industry. This is famous people. This is where it all happens. Um, but I didn't realize how much work was behind it. And um, honestly, it's a lot. It's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. um, but basically, I just started auditioning a bunch um, for a bunch of random stuff, you know, Target commercials, Kohl's commercials, anything I could do. I was just trying to get a foot in the door. And I ended up having this Disney audition and it went super well. And this casting director ended up calling the head of casting of Disney and was like, you got to meet this kid. 
So I ended up having a general, uh, which I hope a lot of you guys understand what a general is. It's where you <laughs> sit down with the head of casting of that specific studio and you get to know them that way any project that comes along they can think of you or they already get to know you because in auditions you don't really get to know that many people you just right. you're there to do the the script and then you move on so i had a general with disney and i sat down and talked with her for about an hour and she was like we love you your personality's great like you're very humble you're very just a normal guy and we we love that and i think it was about six months later um I auditioned for Dog with a Blog, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I ended up booking that. And then after the first episode of Dog with a Blog, Girl Meets World came along, and I ended up booking that. And then we did the pilot, and six months later, we were picked up and mm -hmm. off to the races. Yeah, off to the races, exactly. Now, now, did you typically get nervous in those kind of situations, auditions, self-tapes, generals, or do you feel like you're a, you have a good head, you're pretty, pr pretty chill about it? You know... Back then, I would say I was pretty nervous, but I would say the, the nervousness was more of an adrenaline of excitement. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was always just like, I'm here, let's do it. I really want to do this. So I would just throw myself off these ledges that I would normally never do. Um, and I just let go and was like, just, just put it out there. Just do mm -hmm. whatever they need to do, do whatever the script calls for. You know, and some of them when I was young was most of them actually were improv. Most of them, they'd hand you the, you know, the two pages and they'd go, hey, we want you to improv a lot of this. So you know what it's mm -hmm. about, but just go ahead and improv it. And that was crazy as a, you know, 10, 11 year old. I was like, man, wait, what? I just get to make <laughs> stuff up. Um, but it was really fun. And it, it was just kind of excitement more than nervousness. Yeah. And, and I bet I, I hear things like Disney Channel being kind of a boot camp for kid actors and teen <laughs> actors. You just really learn the ropes early on and you're, you're, you're thrown into it. Um, in hindsight, what, what do you value most about your time going through that particular experience and now obviously uh, advancing into more adult roles? What, 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 do you, what do you take away from your experience on Disney? You know, Disney was, you know, a lot of people think of it as a machine, but I mean, it's, it's really not. It's, it's more of a family it's more of a family. I mean, they really like, they kind of mom and dad you and they teach you the ropes. Um, and it's, I love it because it's not something like you can just throw around. It's a very intense business. And when it comes to media, when it comes to your life, walking around, like what happens on set, they really train you sternly about how the process works. And at a young age, it really taught me what I have looking forward in my life. Like I picked their brains as much as possible about how to be professional, about how this process works. And um, honestly, coming out of Disney, Disney, it gave me that work ethic. Cause mm -hmm. like I said, it was, you know, I was uh, really 11, 12. I was 12 when we started the first season and, you know, it's up at 4.40 AM and home at seven and school in between their homework, reading scripts, memorizing, for you know six months out of the year for three years it's just a lot of work um yeah. and it taught me that discipline which obviously as an actor you have to be on your own case about what you're going to do so you know no one's going to do the work for you so it's all on your own and it's however much work you want to put in and disney gave me a good jump of of how much work that's going to be yeah absolutely i mean that's an important lesson for for anyone to learn and it sounds like it, it came at the right time for you because because here you are doing it uh, now in a or not a series a project like he's all that um, t tell us a bit about that experience how did this uh, opportunity come along uh, what, what was the audition process like give us a tease on uh, how it all started for you but this was this was wild um, yeah. and uh, other actors you know will really appreciate this because it was something we were uh, we started auditioning in October uh, which was full co uh, COVID, you know what I mean? Yeah, there was, yeah. was nothing going on. I was straight quarantined. You know, LA was locked down. Um, so you weren't really auditioning in general? <laughs> no audition. Yeah. There was nothing going on. Um, and then I ended up getting this email that came through and they were like, hey, we have an audition. And I was like, <laughs> what? Let's do it. Um, and they were like, hey, it's going to be a Zoom with the directors and producers. And I was like, okay zoom um do i really want to do this like is this something that's real is this going to continue mm -hmm. or like what's going on ended up getting the script 
read the script, uh, saw that Addison was attached, saw that it was Miramax, saw that it was, you know, Andrew Panay and Jennifer Gibgott, like huge producers, huge studio. Um, and of course, Addison, I was like, okay, let me dive into the script and figure out why she's attached. And of course, it's about an influencer. So I was like, this is perfect. Like this, she, her of all people to lead this film is, mm -hmm. it's perfect. Uh, and I ended up auditioning. And the day of the audition, uh, my character, by the way, I know you've seen the movie, um, <laughs> but my character is a complete douche. He <laughs> right. is just a tool bag. Um, but I, I read in the script that he's shirtless over and over again. I keep seeing in Jordan Van Dran shirtless, shirtless, shirtless. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I started the Zoom session and I popped a white claw and drank it. And then I looked at him and I took off my shirt. And I just <laughs> sat there starting the zoom session with a white claw and my shirt off yeah and really they all the mood. <laughs> they all ding into the audition and they're like uh, hi you know what i mean and it was just one of those that i was like i would have never done that if i was walking into a room it just mm -hmm. would, i wouldn't have done it because it was you know you know you think about professionalism and stuff but thanks to the zoom i was like i'm sitting in my home how do i make this character mine and like what do i bring to this weird dynamic that we have going on with this zoom sessions and i just basically started it with my shirt off and just just dove in for it yeah oh that's so fun and, and obviously it left an impression the, the reaction was pretty positive to you inhabiting the character in that way yeah um, do, do, do you typically uh what well in terms of auditions you've obviously found success in the audition room self tapes and whatnot um what's, what's your number one piece of advice for the actors out there on leaving an impression like that and making the most of your time with casting directors. You know, and it's so different now <clears throat> because I talked to one of the casting directors and she was like, we don't know if we'll ever go back to fully in-person auditions. Yeah. Where they think it'll stay online. Um, and it's your job. You know, you get a limited amount of time, but now you don't have a limited amount of time. Obviously you don't want to waste their time, but you have to make the most out of your time. But now it's a lot longer because now mm -hmm. you get to show yourself uh, you know, through your slate or before you start, most likely after you finish the tape or finish the script, you can sort of give a little bit of yourself. Um, and you want to put a lot into it. You really want to read the script and pay attention to details because now more than ever, it's more important about clothing, about voice, about the style in which you film it. Like there's so many things that go into it now. It's, you know, actors for auditions now aren't just actors. They're kind of directors in their own way. Mm -hmm. They kind of get to create their own atmosphere where we're going to film this, how we're going to film it. And I think you take advantage of that. And I think you run with it and show as much as you possibly can and be as creative as possible. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, well, as a final question for you then, thanks again for sharing your time with us. Um, obviously, this is just the, the latest and greatest of, of what you're up to. What, what's next on your bucket list acting wise? What, are, what kind of projects are you hoping to get into? Oh, I mean, who knows? You know, my, my blinders are open right now. I'm just kind of figuring out what's what's going to come my way next. But if I had to pick, it would definitely be something uh, like 1917, like mm -hmm. war, or like Saving Private Ryan or something like that. Like I would love to do like a time piece or a war piece or something like that. I just feel like that would be so much fun to film. Yeah, yeah, that that, that seems like a really good fit for you. So uh Put it out there, manifest it, and Throw we'll it. see what happens. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, well, Peyton, it's been great to get to know you a little bit. Congrats on this new film, and uh, go enjoy the premiere. Uh, Thank you touch. so much. I really All appreciate right. it. Yeah, bye-bye. Bye, guys.